This is my latest art journal page. And if you would like to see how I got from here to here, join me, won't you? Hi there. I am going to start a new art journal page. I've already laid down my collage background, the underlayer that I use on most of my pages. If you have not seen how this is done, I've linked to a couple of videos in the text below that will walk you through this. But today we're just going to get started. I wanted to soften the jangliness a bit. So I've added a border that goes all the way across both pages of the layout. I made this by printing flowers from the graphics fairy onto tracing paper, which I then glued to some text, just some pages from an old novel. And hey presto, you've got a border. I've already picked out my images from my scrap paper library. If you're not sure about how to do that, make your own scrap paper library. There's also a video link for that. Check it out. I'm not really the orange rose type as a rule, but these really made the page pop. It's almost a 3D effect. And these just came from a gardening catalog. She is from a coffee table book of religious art. And I like how the orange in her halo and her robes picks up the orange marigold color in the roses. Now I have a kingfisher from a bird book. By the way, I do know that he is not a hummingbird. I know that he is a kingfisher, but today he is both. Again, you've got some orange in the breast and in the eye band that picks up and makes the eye hold together with the other images. Finally, I want to add some wings. I took a Fisker's stencil of butterflies and drew it onto marbled paper and cut it out. And now she has some wings. I'm going to tilt those a little bit. Again, you can see here that the mottled blue picks up the mottled blue in the bird. And so even though these are whimsical, disparate pieces that maybe shouldn't hold together, that helps them hold together. I'm going to have some space here and I can tell already that rather than fill it up and get too busy, I think I'm going to add a quote, a handwritten quote, which means I'm going to want to put a little bit of blank paper there that I can use. So I'm going to go glue that down and then we'll move on to the next layer. Now I've glued everything into place and to prepare for the next layer, I have gone round all of the edges of the major elements and outline them uh, using a water soluble graphite pencil. So this one is made by Karen Dash. It's called Technalo, but uh, a lot of companies make them. You just want graphite pencil that is water soluble, which means that when you get it wet, it will start to work like an ink or a paint. Usually, uh, it's traditional to use water, but today I am going to use gesso to activate it. And you can see here that I am putting the gesso in a hummus lid. So I have started using yogurt lids and hummus tops and things of this sort uh, for little baby palettes. So free art supplies. Okay. So the thing about the gesso is when you have the, the white of the gesso and it comes in contact with the dark of the graphite, you get this super haunting gray. And you want to pull that right down, cover the border, but also pull it right down into your paper. That's going to give a little bit of a, I don't know, sort of a 
grotto look to it, almost like an old fresco. It also softens the edges here and eventually will make it look, your piece look less like a collage and more like a painting. And you will see this as we continue. I like to really take my time at this point. It's, uh, it's beautiful and it's fun. And I just like to work into all of the different parts, letting it talk to me, telling me where it wants to go a little bit. Don't be afraid to be quite messy. And because it actually does take a while, I'm going to go finish this and come back and show you what it looks like before we move on to the next layer. Now this is how it looks after I've added the gesso uh, to the graphite throughout. And you can see it's very messy, but that's fine. It's not a mess. It is a canvas that we're going to work into. We've got at least two more layers. Here you can see that I did not just go around the blooms. Uh, I actually went into the petals and added some graphite and gesso. It's not entirely perfect as a technique, but I do like the way that it's made. The flowers start to look more like an abstract painting and not quite so shiny like a catalog. So now, I felt like it needed a little bit more composition wise up here to pull the eye away from this very dramatic anchor here. So I looked at a couple of things and ended up with tissue paper. Now this is from the bookstore in the gift wrap section. So it was cheap and I rough tore a little piece just just to go up there and I don't know if you know this but if you paint a little bit of tissue paper with your your adhesive it's going to go completely transparent and you can see anything that's underneath so that text is still there very subtly it also gives what i call a let's see a torn wallpaper effect which you know i really like gives the sense of something being know, abandoned and found maybe so i just decided to scatter a few bits of that throughout okay so that's it for the composition I think now I want to add our next layer of embellishing with color I'm using a variety of water soluble media I have some Caron dash crayons I have some Derwent XL graphite chunky sticks. I use these a lot. But if you don't have all of that stuff, you can use whatever you've got, just kids crayons or these are soft chalk pastels. You can get them anywhere and they're very cheap and they're also water soluble. This is a little tricky to explain how to add the embellishment because it's very much about taking your time and letting it tell you what it needs for balance and interest. I can tell you that we will be working on the marigold colors and bringing out the blue. Just not sure how yet. I do know that I want to go in a little bit here. It's 
very hard to see. Well, it's actually very subtle where I am. But uh, again, that's going to make it a little bit abstract looking, messy, but still pretty. So I'm going to be working with that. I also know that I want to add, and that's a little too yellow, to add some of these colors just, just a little bit like that. Even though these are water soluble, I often just smudge at this point. You see I'm going here. It's just a little bit of mark making that I think will pick that up. Oops. A little bit of mark making here, sorry, that will pick this up. I know I'm going to be adding a little bit of this blue. Now again, these are water soluble, but dry, these smudge really, really beautifully. So that's, I'm going to be doing a little bit more there, bringing the blue out here, here. So Now, I did add the marigold crayon here, as I showed you, and added just this tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of gesso to move that around. And you see that has actually, um, still has that, gives it an abstract look, but has uh, worked against some of that heavier gray that was there before. I also, added some marigold as I showed you here and I did activate that also with a bit of gesso and pulled it on down here and then kind of just pulled it so that it faded into the, the, the horizon here. I've added a little bit of blue here, a little bit here, you know, just very subtle. I'm not going to add some blue mark making using a stencil and a soft chalk pastel. This is one of my favorite techniques for just adding a little bit of colorful mess and really starting to pull your page together. You want to get the page very lightly wet, just damp. Take your pastel, work it into your stencil. And now there's just a little, a little bit of blue there, just a little mess contributing to that um, torn wallpaper or, or wall effect. You know, I always think it looks like a, you know, a wall outside that used to have an advertising on it, maybe from the 1940s or something. And that's just been peeling ever since like I used to see in small towns. There we go. That's, that's looking good. And then I'm going to do it again over here. And I think I will again, rather than the pastel, I'm going to use the graphite pencil. Yeah. So now we have this little bit of, oh, you know what? I think we could use some right here. Yeah. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you see how you just have a little bit more balance and uh, coolness. There's one last thing I want to try. It, I'm not sure it's a great idea, but we're going to see how it goes. And that's going to add some messy dribbles. I think that's the technical art term, dribbles. Uh, this is blue ink and water in a mister. If you'd like to see more about how I use misters and inks and acrylics, there's also a video that I've linked to in the text below. So I'm going to start my dribble up here. And so I want to make sure that I kind of cover everything else. I found out the hard way that if you're not careful, you're going to just spritz the whole darn thing. So what I'm doing is just, there we go, spritzing that corner and messing it around. Okay. Yes, I did see it get on my table. That's why my table looks the way it looks. Now I'm also going to take my plain water and kind of work it in that pool. Okay. There we go. Because I want to use that. This is a way to help guide it a little bit so that it goes where you want. Sort of. Kind of. I think we might try a little bit over here as well. Not on the bird. There we go. Yes, yeah, so now it's looking like, oops, sorry about that. Now it's looking like some old paint. It's faded a long time ago. Okay, so I'm going to pick a little bit of this up. But that's it. I think that's going to be it. I say that, but I'm fibbing. I will probably work on this page for another uh, two weeks. Uh, it's a great pleasure sometimes to go back let it sit and uh, look at it anew and see what it needs. Anyway, if you like this, please, please ring the bell and subscribe. I would be so grateful. If you uh, like this sort of uh, video, I also have more on my website, which I've linked to, and you can go there. Also, subscribe to my newsletter for free art tutorials, downloads, and the occasional pep talk. Thanks very much for walk watching. I do appreciate it. Now get up and go make something.